If it's summer, it's time for a strawberry tart. And I'm going to show you how to make it today on Too Hot to Handle. Welcome to the Season 2 opener of Too Hot to Handle. I'm your host, Howie Hope. And now, let's make that strawberry tart. So that tart was beautiful, right? Now, uh, the most critical element of the tart, well, they all, all the layers need to be delicious, but the most critical layer, the layer that supports it all, is the crust, the freestanding pastry shell. And these are all the ingredients you need to do it. It's basically flour, some fat, a pinch of salt, and a little bit of sugar. And what we want to do is incorporate layers of butter, flour, butter, flour, butter, flour, uh, like that, to keep them separate, even though we knead it all together. We need layers and layers to make that tender flakiness when it cooks. Now, the most critical element in doing all this is controlling temperature. You want it to be absolutely cool, or even downright cold as you're working. So, I'm going to measure out the ingredients first, and then this is all going into the freezer for 20 minutes or so before we begin even trying to make it into dough. So we'll start off with a cup of flour. I like to use the scoop and level message method, that is. Scoop it and level it off. And that's a pretty good, accurate measure of a cup of flour. Scoop and level. Two cups. That's all we need there. Now also in this flour, we're gonna put Oh, about a teaspoon of salt and about two tablespoons of sugar. This isn't really going to flavor the dough all that much, but it will help it when it comes to browning. The sugar caramelizes in the dough and gives it that nice golden brown color. Now, uh, the other measurements, you need a stick and a half of butter. That's six ounces and also four ounces or four tablespoons, I should say, of standard vegetable shortening. And just measure a tablespoon at a time and scoop it onto the same plate with the butter. Now, some pie doughs, you could use all butter instead of the shortening, but with the standard general purpose flour we get in the United States, it's made from very hard wheat. And if you don't have the shortening, the crust can turn out to be well, quite brittle. If you're using a softer flour, like those some that you can find in European places, or just a cake flour and things like that, well, you wouldn't have to add the shortening, but it works well for the crust. Um, so that's it. Flour, a little bit of salt, a little bit of sugar, butter, and shortening. So now all these are going to go into the, fr the freezer section for at least 20 minutes and then we'll come back and show you how to put the dough together. Alright, so 20 minutes have magically gone by and I've taken this flour, salt and sugar mixture out of the freezer and we're going to use a food processor to help us make this dough. Now this is not the traditional way to go, um, but it is fast and convenient. If you want to see how traditionally this dough is made, look up my video on quiche Lorraine, because I show you the hand method in that process. But this, with all doughs, it is absolutely essential to work as quickly as possible because you want the ingredients to stay as possible. Now I've just put those in there and I'm just going to pulse it a few times to kind of give it a quick spin around and mix up the salt and sugar and flour and then I'm going to go for the butter and the shortening. Now for the butter, it's pretty hardened. I'll take an entire stick and cut it in half and then right down long ways, flip it and long ways again. So you've essentially made four sticks and then chop it into smaller chunks. And then the same with the next piece. 
flip it sideways, right down the middle, and then chop it into chunks. Touch it with your fingers as little as possible. I know you have to a bit to get it to work around. But even the temperature of your hands or your body temperature will start to melt that butter. Now, if you're in a situation like I am today, which is in a very hot kitchen uh, without air conditioning, in the middle of summer, working quick is essential. Because if that butter and fat melts, uh, it will mix with the flour and just form a kind of a pasty goo. We don't want that. We want to keep the layers separated and the only way to do that is to keep it very, very cold. Hence the freezer method. So we'll put all that butter in there and these four tablespoons of near frozen shortening and we're ready to go again. Right, we want to start with just pulsing it. Short burst. And do it several few times until it becomes a kind of coarse, grainy, pebbly looking. That looks a bit right. If I can quickly show you. Yeah. Small chunks, little pebbles. Perfect. And now the final ingredient is water. This is iced water and I'm not going to use nearly this much. I just have ice in it to keep it cold. And we're going to add this a mere uh, tablespoon at a time. We'll just turn it on and slowly add the water in. Probably going to have no more than six or seven tablespoons. Three, four, Five, six, leave it there, let it do its thing, and we're going to let it spin until it just starts to come together and form a ball. It's almost there, and that's it, off. Just as it starts to come together, that's where we want to stop that process. Now, once that dough is just started to come together, we're going to take a sheet of clean film, plastic wrap, and turn out this dough right onto the wrap. Of course, it helps to take the blade out as well, but it's not all together. There are parts of it that are still crumbly. Just get it all out onto your wrap and use your hands to just kind of push it together. There you go. Make a little semi disc shape. Wrap it up tight so we don't have air getting in there. And we are going to put this in the refrigerator for a minimum of two hours and overnight is perfectly fine because even now that the butter, fat, and flour is already starting to warm up and we don't want to risk it melting at all. So right back into the refrigerator it goes, minimum of two hours, even overnight is good. Now, one of the crucial things about making the pie crust is to keep that dough very, very cold for as long as you can. So we're doing as much of it uh, as possible in advance. For example, the oven is preheated to 425 and now I'm gonna butter our uh, baking pan. It's a false bottom quiche ring pastry ring and uh, just get some butter in there this is obviously softened a bit and no better tool than your hand to work it around get it all over the bottom of course because we don't want anything to stick but be sure especially to work it into all the fluting around the sides there that's that and we'll put that aside. All right, so the dough has been in the refrigerator overnight and it's fairly hardened up and that's great because all the layers of fat, essentially the butter and the shortening, have uh, hardened and solidified and placed in between layers of flour. Now, you want to work very, very, very quickly because we don't want that butter and fat to melt. And the first thing you want to do is probably just uh, 
scatter some flour on your work surface. This is a little marble slab I have because it helps it to stay cool. And some flour on top of your dough. And get serious with it. Beat it a bit to help get the process started and turn. And turn it over. Get some more flour right there. Turn again. And we're close to ready. Put some flour on your rolling pin. It doesn't hurt to have it on both fingers because it keeps it from sticking to you. And then roll. You want to go not all the way to the end because it, the ends will taper and become too thin. We go almost to the end and push it back and go almost to the other end. There you go. And keep it turning. Kind of trying to work quickly as we can. And some more flour. And try to work it and get it as close to being circular as you can. Keep it turning. And we want it a pretty even consistency, maybe about three eighths of an inch thick all around. And of course you can always grab your pan and just measure it and see. Yes, we've got plenty of extra. So, I found the easiest way to do this is just fold the dough in half there and then fold it in half again. And working quickly, pick it up and put that point right in the center of the pan. Unfold it out and unfold it out. Now, you want to make sure that you get dough all the way into the corners of the pan, so lift it up and push it down into your fluted areas. And this dough is already pretty soft because working in a very hot kitchen with no air conditioning. So all the way around, up and push it down so that we have a really thick sidewall because this pie is going to support itself, or this tart I should say. So get it all, there you go, fairly evenly pushed into the fluting of the pan. And then take off the excess just by rolling over. that. Take off the supporting dough, or the surrounding dough. And you see some places are, the wall is a little thicker, so just go around and push back then up to make it about as close as you can come to even thickness. This part is really thick, so some's going down and up. And now, we can do just a little bit of decoration with a fork or the back of the knife. Just take your fork and go around and as you squeeze it up, make a little imprint. It's already getting kind of soft so the imprint is hard to stay. Ideally you'd do this in a very cold air-conditioned kitchen and you can also put your marble slab in the refrigerator for 20 minutes or so before you start and that'll also help keep the dough cool. And that's it. So it's basically formed. The last thing we want to do at this stage is to dock the base which means just go around and hook a few holes which is going to allow steam to escape so this doesn't bubble up in the oven. 
Now that's it, we want to let it set for just a little bit before it goes in the oven to keep its form. So we're going to put it back into the refrigerator for about 15 or 20 minutes. Okay, so our dough has been in the refrigerator for about uh, 15 to 20 minutes and uh, it's nice and set and uh, rehardened again so we know it'll keep its shape in the oven. But to help that along, we are going to do uh, a little bit of pie weighting. I've got two sheets of aluminum foil and we're just going to cover the base of the pie with and make sure that you go around and push it all the way into the surface of that dough. And just to make doubly sure, I use a second piece and go all the way around. Now what we want to do is help the dough keep its shape because it'll tend to expand in the oven and steam up and even though we've docked it, poked those little hose to allow the steam to escape, there were still pockets of uh, little minute bubbles that will try to expand in the eating. So what I have here, this cup is nothing but little ceramic beads. They weigh practically nothing but together. So you just pour in all the beads and push them out to the rim of the pan. Now you don't have to use ceramic beads. I know people who use beans, just dried pinto beans or garbanzo beans or rice or any other kind of thing that's uh, oven proof just to hold it. Now that's all we need to do and we're going to immediately stick that into a 425 degree oven. Taking that out of the oven, and all you gotta do is remove these pie weights and just bring in the edges of the foil to the center. Put them all in like that and off to the side. So, pie has kept its shape fairly well. We're gonna put it right back into the oven. Now we have lowered the temperature in the oven from 425 starting point to 375. And uh, we'll go about another 10 or 12 minutes, but it really depends on your oven temperature and how evenly it cooks. So don't leave it, don't set a timer, just kind of watch it because when it gets a nice golden brown, we don't want to go any farther than that. Here we go. So in the meantime, we've got our pie back, our uh, pie shell back in the oven uh, to finish its cooking. In the meantime, we can start the top layer of the pie, which is the glaze. And it's uh, going to be a strawberry glaze made out of just this strawberry jelly not jam preserves or anything like that it doesn't have any chunks of fruit in it and we're not worried about that because our tart is going to be filled with fruit this is just going to be a glaze for the top to uh, make it shimmer and shine and all you do is take a small saucepan and empty that jar of jelly into it and we're going to uh, melt that down and just bring it to a boil over medium high heat. And as it starts to bubble and simmer, you can just help it along with a little whisk. And just keep going until this is all melted into a liquid. And we'll show you, it has a double use. Not only is it going to be a glaze for the top of our tart, it's going to uh, waterproof the crust to keep it flaky so it doesn't get soggy with the custard. Looking good, looking good. Pretty much all the solids are just about liquefied now and it's come to a boil and at that point you just want to turn it way, way, way down low. Almost as low as your little flames can get. So we want to keep it liquefied, but not boiling away. And it can slowly reduce and get thickened on its own while we pay attention to something else. All right then, coming out of the oven. Just a tender golden brown. And that's just what we want. We're gonna let it cool off for a little bit here. Then we're going to uh, transfer it onto a cooling pan there. I made a cooling rack. And it is a bit puffy and that will settle down some as it cools. 
But the next thing we're going to do now is glaze the bottom of this so that it's uh, waterproof so our custard doesn't soak through the little vent holes we put in it. Okay, now that that shell has had a chance to cool, we're going to take the strawberry glaze that we've made and just kind of uh, paint it on. I want to cover the entire inside of the shell, especially make sure we get it into those corners where leaks might happen. into the refrigerator again for 15 or 20 minutes while we make the custard filling. What's going in here now is what's called a creme patissiere or in English pastry cream and we'll float beautiful fresh strawberries on top of that and cover it again with the strawberry glaze. Now to make the creme patissiere or the uh, pastry cream filling we need to start with five egg yolks that means separating some eggs. And I found the easiest way is to crack it on a flat surface so you don't send shards of shell into the egg, into a bowl, and then just use your fingers, again the best tool in the kitchen, to scoop up that yolk and transfer it from hand to hand and let the white fall away. And once you have just the yolk, drop it in your bowl and do that five times. five yolks. Now we're going to slowly beat in the sugar with the wire whisk. All right, the uh, first thing we'll do is break up these eggs a little bit. And then we want to slowly add the sugar, not all at one time or it'll be totally grainy in the final product. We want to give each little bit of sugar a chance to get incorporated before we add the rest of it. always do this with an electric beater as well just sometimes a bit of a traditionalist in this way surely you the old-fashioned classic way of how it was done and once all that sugar's in there you want to keep beating it for just a couple of minutes you can see it's uh, turned a much lighter color And then, finally, slowly beat in one half cup of scooped and level flour. And there, once you've got that nicely incorporated, the next ingredient is milk, and I have two cups of milk on the stove. It's been slowly coming to a boil, and we will slowly drizzle that in to this mixture. And so with the milk that's just boiling, we're gonna just barely dribble this into here and get it mixed. Uh, it's called tempering, which means to gradually bring up the temperature of the eggs here because if we put all that hot liquid in here uh, all at the same time you basically get scrambled eggs with a lot of flour in them so we don't want the eggs to cook just yet until we get it all incorporated in so seriously just drips drips at a time until we've got all two cups incorporated So 
so when you get all the two cups of boiling milk incorporated in there, you just want to beat this for probably another two or three minutes. So you get it aerated and full of foam. All right, after that's got a pretty good froth on it, we're gonna return it to the very same pan. It's a very, very thick bottom saucepan. And now we'll bring this to medium high heat on the stove and cook that custard. So we'll put this custard mixture on the medium high heat and just we we'll wanna keep it stirring until it comes to a boil. This is not difficult at all to do, but it does take a few techniques and it's not difficult, but it does need to be watched over. But taking the time to do it right is oh so worth it. Right now, like I say, it's on medium to high heat because we want to bring it to a boil, but the most important thing is don't let the bottom of it scorch. And you can easily accomplish that by stirring with a wire whip and getting into all the corners and across the bottom. Now, some people want to do this over a double boiler. They'll boil water and have another pan that fits in top of the first pan and cook the custard on top of the steam. And you can do that, and yes, it is possibly a safer way, but it takes so long to accomplish. Much, much, much longer than this will. So if you're careful, and if you feel it start to scorch, just take it off the heat for a couple of seconds or a minute and bring it back. But right now, it's just the slow stir waiting for it to boil. And once it does come to a boil, we'll reduce the heat to a medium low and then just beat it and beat it and beat it until it thickens up. And as this starts to come to a boil, it gets kind of lumpy. You'll see lumps in it and that's quite all right. That's expected. Just keep it moving and make sure the bottom doesn't get scorched. These lumps will all work out in just a short time. So we're at the boil now. It's pretty much bubbling and popping. At this point, turn down that heat to a medium low and start working it. This is what's going to turn it into custard now. This thickening process right here. Get all around, make sure you don't let it scorch. If it feels like it's getting too hot again, take it off the heat and continue whisking. If you feel any areas that are slightly bit sticky, you know, work that area of the pan till it feels free again. And back on the heat. It's very essential uh, that it be a nice thick bottom pan. This is quite thick. I think triple clad stainless steel on the outside with aluminum on the inside. And you see that? That's getting very puddin like is right where you want it. So as long as you keep it moving, it's not going to scorch. And we'll keep getting that until it's the thickness that we desire. And since this is going to be in a tart, which you may not s uh, serve all of it at the same time, when you slice it, you want it to be able to hold its own shape and not ooze out into the pan. So just to make sure that doesn't happen, uh, keep it cooking till it gets a bit thicker than you might imagine. And as it thickens up, the final two ingredients you're going to put is about a tablespoon of butter. Keep it stirring, melt that butter right in there to really enrich that custard. And finally some vanilla extract, about a tablespoon and a half. And combine those. So that butter loosens it up a little bit more, makes it a little more 
uh, creamy, so we're gonna cook it a little while till it thickens up a little further than that. Okay, our pie shell is out of the refrigerator and that uh, strawberry glaze has set. And so now, that's what our custard looks like. And we just pipe it right in. Let's get it all into the center and it will mostly find its own level, but we may find that we need to help it to the edges. This is, by the way, if I didn't say it before, an 11-inch tart pan. And ultimately, we're gonna unmold this and take the shell out, but uh, just for insurance sake, just so we don't break it by filling it in all. And that's about it. Just kind of push it to the edges there. And the top, you don't have to smooth it out. And it doesn't have to be pretty because all of our strawberries for our final layer, the strawberries and the glaze are gonna go on top of that. And we're gonna put that back in the refrigerator for just a few minutes. So let this set, get a little more firm before we add the fruit. Okay, so our creme patissiere has been in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes or so, and it's nicely set kind of bounces back so that's exactly what you want and now we are going to uh, decorate it or put on our strawberries and I've just got a colander full of strawberries that all I've done is lopped off the top to get rid of the greens and take probably your biggest ones first and put one right in the center and then just start building around the circle get them right up next to each other and we'll go thus, and thus, and thus, until the tart is covered with strawberries. So there is your strawberry tart. Now we go back to our strawberry glaze. Just dribble that on. Now, once you've got your strawberries all glazed on the tart, uh, all that's left is to unmold it. And so I'll use the help of a tall can, this of tomatoes, but you could use coffee or whatever else. Rest the bottom and then just slide that off. The rim comes out, so the shell is holding up itself. And I use a cake lifter to gently slide it under the tart, pick it up, and move it over to a serving plate. That goes away. And voila. And for summertime, strawberry tart. And there you have it. Strawberry tart so delicious it'll make you write home to your mama about it. So that's it for this episode of Too Hot to Handle. Thank you so much for joining us. If you like the video, click like in your Facebook or your YouTube or on whatever platform you're watching. And please feel free to share it with your friends. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and come back soon and see what's cooking.